Hello and welcome to this presentation on improving the quality of web harvests using the Web Curator tool. It is brought to you by the National Library of the Netherlands and the National Library of New Zealand. As online presence is indispensable in our volatile world, web archives are an invaluable resource of factual information about what was online at a certain moment. We need only look back to recent years and events to see how important an accurate record of online content has become. As much online content is short-lived, it is important to gain the highest quality at the moment a site is crawled or days thereafter before the content has changed or disappeared. With such a wide range of online material and different methods and scales of collecting, this can restrict the amount of meaningful quality assurance that is humanly possible. So how much QA is possible? With greater scales and frequency of crawling, the less quality assurance is practical or feasible. Traditionally, this is where the Web Curator tool sits on this scale of QA and continues to with our latest developments. It is targeted at users who are reviewing most, if not all, of their harvests, but ultimately this enables you to do as much QA as you would like to do. WCT is an open source workflow management application for selective web archiving. It supports a harvesting workflow comprising a series of specialized tasks. Selecting an online resource documenting any permissions that are required to harvest. We then set up a record of this online resource within WCT, describe it with descriptive metadata, and determine its scope and boundaries. The resource is crawled, the progress of which is monitored by stats and logs. You can intervene if necessary to pause and stop. After the crawl is finished, we can review the harvest in a viewer and perform QA. There are tools to patch content for correcting harvest errors. The last step is depositing web harvests into a digital repository or archive. Here at the National Library of New Zealand, we archive our harvests from WCT into the Rosetta Digital Preservation System. The WCT was originally developed in 2006 and after a long period of development and activity, the National Library of the Netherlands and the National Library of New Zealand began collaborating in 2017 to upgrade the WCT to meet the requirements of modern web harvesting. We will continue to develop and support WCT into the foreseeable future. A big part of taking WCT forward has been involving the user community and valuing their ideas and input into our development roadmap. Through a combination of our own institutional needs and feedback from the community, we decided on uplifting the QA functionality in WCT in our next iteration of development. This was an area in need of improvement with some components no longer fit for purpose. WCT, as it stood, allowed for the traditional methods of QA, checking some basic metrics and stats, replaying a harvest in Wayback, browsing crawl logs and screenshots of a harvest, and limited importing and pruning through a tree view. So we looked at how we could improve the QA experience in WCT. Five features we identified for development were building a new, scalable, and fit-for-purpose harvest visualization, expanding the current patching to handle importing and pruning in bulk, integrating PyWB as another harvest replay option, enhancing the current screenshot functionality, integrating PyWB as a crawl tool for patching and main crawling. The revamped harvest visualization replaces an old tree-like view in WCT that did not scale and was no longer fit for purpose. We started from scratch in designing a visualization 
that was useful for QA. Many web archive visualizations can look aesthetically pleasing, but serve little purpose for meaningful QA. To avoid the normal tangled mess of links and nodes for URLs within a harvest, we abstracted the data to a domain level. Aggregating URLs into groups of domains gives a higher overview of a crawl, and we believe allows for quicker analysis of the relationships between content and a harvest. The harvest network graph in WCT is interactive. The layout can be manipulated, and you can also zoom and pan the camera to achieve the desired view of the data. A graph consists of links and nodes. Links are directional and can be seen by the arrowheads. They indicate that a domain contains at least one URL that links to URLs within another domain. There is a single domain node in the shape of a star. This indicates which domain contains the starting seed URLs for the crawl. All other nodes are circles. Their size is determined by the number of URLs harvested in that domain. Yellow nodes are a single domain. Blue nodes are a group of subdomains with a common second level domain. The number of subdomains in the group is shown in brackets. This node can be expanded when needed. When expanded, the node becomes pink and red subdomain nodes will appear with their own links. The pink node continues to act as a parent and can be used to drag and control the group. Here we can see that the domain containing the seed URLs is also a subdomain group. When expanded, we can see the subdomains that were harvested as part of this netlib.govt.nz crawl. At a high level, we can start to see the relationships between the content and a harvest. We can quickly identify outliers and clusters of unwanted content and get a sense of how far removed they are from the primary target of the crawl. This helps in making adjustments by pruning and importing, or to the scope of future crawls. Even without being familiar with the target website, in this example graph we can already start to see some dependent clusters of content that we might want to question. The direction of the links indicates some possible candidates for exclusion. By clicking on a node, and then the category drop-down box, we can investigate further. This shows us some basic statistics about the URLs harvested in that domain. We can see a breakdown of the content types and the status codes. In this example, the size of the content pulled in via bigcommerce.com is negligible, but if it was 600 megabytes instead of 6, then we have identified a potential problem with the harvest and possible storage saving. For further analysis, we can dig deeper and inspect the URLs harvested under each domain. Inspecting a domain shows us a list of URLs along with the content type, its response code status and size. Also shown are the number of outlinks crawled from each URL, how many were successful or failed and the total size. Each node can be inspected. Inspecting the star node you will see at least one URL with a flag denoting it as the starting seed. In this case, the P flag indicates this URL was the primary seed. Columns can be sorted and filtered by text. There is also a search bar at the top for quick filtering across several of the columns. More controlled search options are available for searching across the entire harvest. Inspecting can also be driven from the statistics in the graph view. For instance, we could inspect all the images harvested within this domain group. Or look at a particular status code. Additional views include a nested tree structure based on the crawl path for the harvest. Starting with the primary seed, each branch includes all the child URLs discovered and crawled from a parent URL. Thinking about our example graph, 
Here we can discover the specific URLs that led the crawler to harvest content from our bigcommerce.com cluster. All URLs can be loaded and browsed directly from here within a configured web harvest viewer. Also the payload from the WARC file for a particular resource can be directly downloaded for any URLs that were crawled with a 200 level response code. A second nested tree view is based on a logical folder structure using the harvested URL paths. This is similar to an existing tree view in the previous version of WCT. The filter box can also be used in this view to quickly search the URLs. In conjunction with the new harvest visualization is the addition of bulk importing and pruning. This has improved the capability of patching in WCT. The patching is driven through the new visualization. We can use the various views to identify URLs to patch or recrawl. These URLs are then staged for patching. We can import new URLs one at a time or in bulk. We are required to use a spreadsheet template when importing or pruning in bulk. Patching in WCT does not modify the original harvest. Instead, a copy is created with the modifications. There is no limit to the number of copies we can derive from the original harvest. Once patching has started, we can monitor the progress in this summary screen, which also acts as a record of what was modified in the harvest. The WCT already provides Open Wayback integration to browse harvests during QA, but in recent years PyWB has become the benchmark for Web Archive Replay and now officially adopted by the IIPC. This integration of PyWB will provide users with the best options available for Web Harvest Replay and Review. Check out the WCT documentation on Read the Docs for information on configuring PyWB as a viewer in WCT. Up until now, all crawling within WCT has been exclusively performed by Heratrix. We've seen a growing use of Web Recorder in our own institutions and seen the benefits of browser-based crawling in capturing modern dynamic content and the efficiency of capturing small single-page websites or publications. To replicate the capture experience with Web Recorder, we have been integrating the use of PyWB's record mode in WCT. We see two huge benefits to this. The ability to patch a harvest with PyWB that has been crawled by Heratrix, and also the option of capture using PyWB and then patching using Heratrix. This mix and match of crawl technologies will hopefully provide us with a lot more flexibility, especially around hard to capture edge cases. This feature is currently still in development. The last major feature is to enhance the existing screenshot functionality. This will include screenshots for each seed URL used in a crawl one for the harvested website and one of its live version for comparison. These screenshots can be optionally included with the harvest files when archiving to a preservation system. This feature is nearing completion and we hope to be available soon. The new features demonstrated are now available in a beta release of version 3.1. They can also be tested in a pre-configured virtual machine available for download on our website. At the National Library of the Netherlands, the KB also use some additional processes in their QA.
All necessary information for this is derived from the WCT database. An Excel sheet is exported and is the base for the selection of websites that need to be reviewed. The quality assurance itself is performed within the WCT and Wayback. Here, our KB colleagues will show how this works in practice. Hi, I'm Iris and I'm a researcher at the KB National Library of the Netherlands. Hi, I'm Trinka and I'm a business information manager at the KB, the National Library of the Netherlands. We will show you how we work with the quality assurance from the web curator tool database at the KB. The first step of the QA process is getting the data out of the database. Here you see the first part of the SQL query that we use. Among others, we query the name, IDs and other settings from the web curator tool database. At this slide, you see the query that we query this every two weeks. The query is flexible. The outcome of the query is an Excel file that you see here. We are erased the names and other private content so that we can show it to everyone. After this, the Excel export is passed on to the quality assurance officer for the real magic. He or she makes the selection which harvests need to be assessed. You can make the selection based on several criteria. A couple that we use are target records with outdated profile settings we wish to change. For example, in the past we used a time limit, but this is no longer necessary. A harvest is also selected when it's very small. For example, it harvested less than 10 URLs or less than one megabyte. There are of course other criteria possible, such as schedule frequency or notes made in the annotation field. But you can also use an annotation field or any other field to not select a harvest for quality assurance. For example, we use certain states, such as the cancelled state, or the QA2019 PC annotation to indicate that the website already underwent quality assurance in 2019. Thank you for your attention. We hope you got a little inside information about the quality assurance workflow we use here at the KB. For more information, don't hesitate to reach out. The communication possibilities are at the end of the presentation. Also, we hope to meet you online at the web archiving conference. To get in contact or find out more information about WCT, you can use the following. Email, Slack, Twitter, GitHub, our website, and documentation on Read the Docs. Thank you for watching. That concludes our presentation.